There's a profile of the profile Unity in this box. That cannot be a coincidence. How we doing, you Mob Panda here? And I hope you bugger are all doing well. Now, because I'm not uploading videos in the absolute whole heap. Especially on the hardware side of things, I thought I'd get something that's up on the hype train and give it a flogging for a couple of months. And what did I end up getting myself? The Profile Unity RTA. This is actually not that bad. I'll give you my thoughts a little bit later on, but uh, it comes out in an absolute plethora of colours. This is in the tall mode because I accidentally broke the glass trying to pull it apart. Um, one tip for you with RTAs. Put it under hot water for a little while and then unscrew them, they actually come undone a lot easier. Um, so yes, I bought this one myself from uh, Wetwix in Fremantle. Um, so, and yes, also like the fact that they're coming up with the uh, the next, next mesh strips from OFRF. That, that's one upper on this, so but I'll give you more of my thoughts a little bit later on. So I'm going to timestamp my look see section to uh, give you, let's see, the wicking and also my thoughts so that way you can just skip to whatever part you want you don't have to listen to me blah 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 like I normally bloody do and talk crap so let's go have a bit of a look see shall we box well that didn't go to plan anyway here is the box you've got a profile of the profile inside the box and you get to see a bit of the embossing that's on the uh, the green bit on the inside and it tells you you know stuff there on the bottom you get a barcode, another barcode, and a thing saying which colour you got. I got the stainless steel. On the side here you get what you've got inside. Stuff. And, yes, the back. And it's upside down. And there we go. All that information right there. Tofo. Uh, the Vapor Chronicles. I knew I'd get that right out of there. Mr. Just Right One and OFRF, which you've got the creators, the strip, and the company. There we go. Voila. On the inside, you'll get a screwdriver. You get your little tool to put the, uh, the mesh around, which I won't throw that because I'm going to need that and I don't want to go looking for it. You get two pieces, which there's only one in here, of the Watofo cotton. I believe it's 5mm, not 6mm, like it is with the uh, the original. You get two pieces, well, two strips of the, uh, the strip mesh here, which is a bloody brilliant. I've been using mine for over a month. It is fine, and I'll show you in a sec. <coughs> you get some baggy of goodness. Which I can't remember what the hell I took out of here. I have no idea, but you get the uh, the O rings, you get uh, you know screws, the uh, center post, a couple of springs there for that. So, and you get some vooping material. And on the on that um, does things that you open up and it shows you stuff. Check that out. Anyway, this is my dirty Utofo Profile Unity. It is disgustingly dirty. I have been using it, obviously. But, you know, on the top, it's, you'll see in here, the juice is a bit dirty. But yes, it's a um, friction fit, so it's got the O-ring on the inside. And you've got your uh, airflow at the side here, which is adjustable. Yes, yes, there we go. It adjusts. And it happens on both sides. And on the bottom, you've got Watofo, Mr. Just Right One, the Vapor Chronicles, and Profile Unity. And a protruding pin. So, yes, you can use this on a mech, and it indeed does work well on a mech. Now, I'm going to show you the inside after I think it's about six weeks of use. I'm going to use this because I haven't emptied it out yet. So, to open it upside down and you can't do this on the mod because of the way it screws off as you can see the center pin does not move and it makes it almost damn near impossible to get off 
because it slides in and then twists. So after an entire six, yeah, six weeks. Okay, it's a little bit dirty and slightly burnt on the edges here, but it was still giving good flavor. And as you can see, you've got the, uh, the cotton going just to the edge here and coming out the, uh, the bottom wicking slots. So as long as you've got it pretty much sitting, as you can see it, that I've got it right here, it's uh, gonna wick very bloody nicely. And I haven't had any issues with leaking and dry hits. It just keeps going and going and going. But as you can see on the inside, the chimney, which is dirty as hell, you can see where the, uh, yeah, see how close I can get this. You can see the, uh, the air holes and also the wicking slots. Sorry, they're the air holes, they're the wicking slots. So yes, you can see where it wicks up and it also uh, wicks up from the bottom as well. So yes, it is um, rather heavy on its wicking. So yes, I'm gonna go take this apart, give it a clean, and then show you how to wick this bugger. And also the, uh, the little spring loady bit that's under here, this bit. There. Thought I was going to put out a lot more uh, gunk than that because I didn't I still had a little bit of juice in there, but there we go. And another tip, and this goes to any RTA. Yes, also, that's your fill port. It's a um, simple just twist and it locks. So, again, dirty juice. But um, anyway, when you go to take this off, run it under some hot water and this will all loosen up a little bit and make it a lot easier to undo. Another thing, try and grip it on the ends as well, not too hard, because the reason I've got the, uh, the larger glass on here, and I didn't show you the smaller glass, is that I've broken it already. So uh, because of that fact, I was gripping it, you know, pretty much like that, and it wasn't coming undone, and I heard crack. So, yes. The, uh, I had to put this on, I didn't, I, I, prefer it with the shorter chimney so you also get the chimney extension in here as well in the pack that's what I took out of that bag because I had to didn't want to I had to but it doesn't make too bad anyway I'm going to stop rambling on I'm going to come back with this thing cleaned up now I'm back with a nice clean bottom section of the tank you can now see inside and there's your air holes right there and on that side you can see all the way through and there's your wicking ports, which you could probably just see a little bit of light coming through there. And the same on this side. And if you have a look up at the top here, you can actually see where the juice goes down and into those uh, ports. So it does cover quite a lot of area, and with mesh, that helps out heaps. Which is why they sort of took a quite a long time getting a mesh uh, RTA out that actually works properly. <clears throat> that is also the... Uh, the chimney section because I've got the uh, longer glass in here due to not being too good with the uh, taking it apart which I do say use hot water sit it under hot water for a little bit use some dishwashing gloves or something like that to uh, heat it up and it just comes undone very easily and quickly so yes there's your uh, fill ports at the top here and then you get this little bit here that goes in on top and it just half a turn and you're in and then your friction fit uh, 810 which so that's a 510 sized hole because that's why so yes there's your top section screwed onto my uh stentorian bloody uh doohickey thingamajiggy mod what's my call it uh is the base of it as you can see it's nothing different to the original unity it has your springiness right there and has your uh, clamps there and there and there are your wicking ports you want to stick just a little bit down there let it you know soak up into here and you want your bit more hanging out at the top here so when you're cutting it uh, let's see it'll be on an angle something like that I'll show you in a sec because I'll grab the uh, bit of mesh that I've been using because I can't bother bending over and use a bit of mesh. 
So yes, this is my old bit of mesh, a little bit dark and gunked up, but once I've put it on the model it'll be fine. But what you do is you get the original strip, it'll be out here, and you just push down. And once you've pushed down, you will see that it comes out to the shape of this tool. That's how mine came out. And you might need to open it up a little bit when you go to put it into the uh, <sighs> doohickey thing, the jiggy, the thing that I'm putting it in right here. But it goes in the sides like so. Just drop it in there and screw him back up. Do it reasonably tight. A little bit extra. And when you dry burn them, dry burn them uh, from fresh as well. Just do it on 20 watts because look how quickly it lights up. And that might have to give that a little bit of a scratchy scratchy. Uh, wasn't expecting to do this. And there we go. It's basically clean. But look how quickly it fires up just on 20 watts when it's got nothing underneath it to cool off. Oh, it's still burning. Nope. Oh, that's the water that's still in there after giving it a wash. So yes, as you can see, the mesh is you know, not as shiny as it used to be, but it'll... Uh, work fine. I reckon I could get at least another probably 100 mil bottle out of that. So now upon wicking it I do not like the uh, the original uh, Watofo aglet thing that comes with it so I've got some cotton bacon and what you do is you get just as one of these little things that come out and basically oh, hang on Grab one of these things that come out, not the bloody two, and then you basically get it about half and split it down the middle. And you end up with, because I've still got one left over, I have tried this many, many times trying to get it going. I think I screwed it up about ooh, five or six times before I actually got it right. So, and you get a nice thick piece like this. And twist the bloody thing in. The important thing here is to make sure that once it goes in here that it's tight that you actually got to press down as you're going in so you can usually get about half out of it so you can go for it again when you um uh do hickey thing with jiggy man i am terrible with my words today a lot of doohickey and thingamajiggering. So you can cut it off uh, about there-ish. And you can reuse again, see? So I think I've done it probably five or six times now. And then you will want to fluff this back up before you cut. Because you want it nice and fluffy like that end right there. So, just because I've gone and squished the ends up, you don't sort of have to do this, you can pull all the way through and not have to worry about squishing it up too much. But uh, you've got to go on an angle and hanging over. So, this is going to be so bloody awkward on this thing. But you need to go on an angle, something like that. So, you've got a little bit hanging up. So, you want it overhanging a little bit, and basically in line with that. So, a little bit of overhang, somewhere around, use sharp scissors. Now, do I get enough there? Oh, I'd say that's probably enough. Now to do this side, I'm going to cheat. Because it is really bloody hard to do this when you're trying to make a video. So you want it, you know, a little bit out. 
And here comes the fun part, making all those little adjustments. So, actually if I've got enough there, I don't know if I've got enough. Well, shit. Give it a bit of a fluff out. Oh, shit. I think I might have fucked that up. We'll find out. <clears throat> Drop a battery on the ground, why not? But what you're wanting to do is tuck this little bit into here. You've got to make sure, as you can see there, that it's touching the bottom. So, as you can see, it's too much. So, you want to just keep taking little bits off. I would go, I think from memory I did that. So, putting it off at the length of the base. And that, I do believe, gave me enough. This is so awkward. I can now see why when Grim was doing this, that's where I learned to do the uh, cotton bacon thing was from Grim, watching his video a few months back. As you can see, it's, it's in there. So that should be fine. That's, that is enough in there. You've just got to keep it fluffed up. So hopefully this one should be fine. No, no, got to take a little bit off. So as you can see, you do end up adjusting this a lot. Especially after you've been doing it a little while, you start nipping little tiny little bits off before you even think about chucking it in there, but I haven't done this in about close to six weeks because I got it right the first time. Well, not, not the first time, but I got it right and I haven't had to adjust it since. Let's just make sure that is isn't heavily fluffed out. And then you've got to fluff this out. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy, joy. I hope someone out there actually knows what the hell I'm going on about. That, and I'm also in, a little bit insane. Okay, <clears throat> fluffed out. Now you've got to cut it so your ports are flush. So it also get the little bits off the top. Make a mess. Now, you also want it so it's all the way around this whole thing. So, take little bits off as you go around. Make sure it stays fluffed up. So, let's fluff that up. Get that off a little bit. Oh man, this is heavily awkward. And once you get one, you're going to realise how awkward this bloody thing is um, to be able to do it on a video. So, and you've got to try and make it so it's when it gets pushed in, that it's not too much. If it's too much, it doesn't uh, wick up properly, which I learned the hard way. So, yes. And also, I hope I'm getting this, you know, reasonably in shot because I'm trying to look at it down here as well as up at the camera at the same time and it is hard. Oh, poor me. Anyway, make sure this is getting fluffed out because otherwise it doesn't soak properly. Uh, looking at that, that is a mess. Oh, got a message. I oh, know, lucky. Make sure it's fluffed up. That. Is 
is roughly how that side should look. Make sure you cut the top bits off. With the top bits, just make it something like that, just so it's sort of flush with the top. Because then as it goes in, it'll push down and push up against the sides. And I am still adding my cutoffs to cutting off. This is going to be such a long video, I tell you. I dare say, no, that's not going to go too well. You've got to try and do this as slow as possible as well, so you don't end up putting too much in there. And I'll fluff this up a little bit more. That should be fine. Hopefully, I've got enough in there now. We shall see. She has to throw a wicket. Juice time. Here comes the fun part. In here I've got uh, big vapes, big bullets. Uh, red, red licorice bullets, white chocolate. The, the what? Yeah, y you know what I mean. So that's a limited edition, and I hope that uh, I hope other people will like it as well because it has to be voted in for them to keep it. So I need to dab this stuff in. It soaks up fairly quickly if you've um, fluffed it up right. This is the silent part where I don't say much, where I try not to say too much anyway. Who wants to hear me babbling on? A little bit over the top. Just tap it. Let it soak through. You've got to get this all soaked up as much as you can before you put it in. That is another thing that um, is a must. Because then you can see whether you've got enough in there or not. And makes it a lot easier to um, get in the wicking slot and not screw it up. That's soaking up ever so nicely. Look at that. And as you can see, now that um, it's still on, as you can see, it's still on the 20 watts. And now it's not doing anything. There's not enough power to do it because it's got um, water water. It's got liquid to cool it down and it's got to try and heat that crap up. Now I dare say that that is nicely wicked up. I'll just make sure that that bottom port just there That is roughly how it should look. This possibly might leak on me. So I might end up having to do it again off camera at some stage before I even do the uh, video. Who knows? Now the other thing is you have to actually take it off the mod or your uh, doohickey thing, majiggy little whatever you want to call it. Whatever, the thing. You know the thing I'm talking about. Anyway. So that goes in here. It's also uh, slotted on the inside here, so it can only go in one way, and then the base itself uh, goes into these threads. So put it in. Damn it, wrong way around. This is going to make a mess. I can see it right now. Now I'm hoping. Juice goes absolutely bloody everywhere all over the mud. I know I haven't put enough wick in it. And I'll do that off camera. And you could all laugh. Probably laughing at me right now anyway, because hey, the hell awkward. 
So you've got nice huge ports on this thing. You can just sit here and just squish the living crap out of it and it won't even overfill while you're trying to put juice in. It's great. But I still wish that I hadn't broken the short glass because I do prefer the warmer vape that it gives without uh, getting dry hits. Because once you start getting up to the warmer sections with this chimney on, uh, it doesn't quite wick at the right speed. Oh, well that was fun, trying to put the cap back on. Now, now I'll shove this back up to about 50 watts. And just give it a few pulses to let that start soaking in. And uh, I'll start vaping away on it and go back up the top. Whee! Doesn't that look shiny? So what do I think about a this profile unity well it's actually quite good I um I was actually expecting you know not much from it because I tried the uh, the uh, RDA with just the normal strips it flavor was good it was okay I didn't mind it I still preferred you know the, the tanks that I was normally using um, but with the next mesh holy cow it is absolutely brilliant um, the flavour is a little bit stronger and the uh, the cloud production is absolutely brilliant. Um, don't know if you saw in the uh, the look-see section, it, mine came up at 0.08. I have no damn idea why they meant to come out at 0.13. But it's been stable at 0.08 the whole entire time I've had it in this tank, as you can see. Focus. Oh, damn it. Focus. Oh, over my face. Yeah, and now you can see that it's um, 0.08. And it's going to be 0.03. Anyway, let's have a bit of a uh, chuck. So as you can see, it puts out an absolute ton of cloud. It is brilliant. That is with the, uh, the airflow wide open. That is my dinner ready. Um... I can give it another few minutes before I need to go get it out of the oven. Um, but yes, it uh, it absolutely surprised me. Um, knocking down the airflow, the flavour does get marginally better. So it's just depending on how you like your vapours, um, how you have the air holes set up. Because it doesn't really affect the flavour that much. I like to have it uh, pretty much open like this. It's not super airy, but it's airy enough to... Um, please quite a lot of people who like their airy vapes um, so yes uh, I'm absolutely stumped right now um, the annoying the annoying thing the annoying thing was when I went to go pull it apart and as you can see up on the top here focus focus it's nice and flush it does stick out a little tiny bit here and when you go to grip on it you can't quite get the grip on the uh, the, the top here with the cap off and that's how I managed to break the glass and there's no spare thing for the short because I do prefer the short mode it's a little bit warmer on the same amount of wattage as you can see this is only on 65 watts and look at the amount of cloud that it puts out but it is a little bit cooler but I don't want to put the wattage up because then I can't chain the living crap out of it so and the other annoying thing is well it's not annoying it's just learning how to wick the damn thing um, it took me about five goes to get it perfect. Every time, other time it would either give me a dry burn, and a dry hit, dry burn. It's good enough. It's dry. Um, or it would just leak its ass off, because I didn't have quite enough pushed up against the sides. Um, so yes, that is pretty much all I can say bad about it. And the, yeah, as I said, the brilliant thing about it is just the flavour and the cloud. And the fact that if you keep your wattage, you know, somewhere around 65 to 70, you can just chuck on it again and again and again and again. And um, yeah, the, the wicking keeps up. So we'll go for uh, pricing here. And where I got mine at uh, Wet Wicks and Fremantle, they've got an online store. And it's uh, $49.95. That seems to be the price across board in Australia. You'll probably get it down to about 45 maybe. Um, in the US, and this is what I'm impressed with right now, $32.95 at Element Vape. 
at uh, the time of this video. Um, and uh, the UK at uh, eSig Warehouse, we have $25.99. So that's not too bad. £26, that's pretty bloody good. So, yes, it, it, um, it certainly uh, is worthy of the hype train. I can tell you that. So, <sighs> I've lost what to say right now. I think I've actually said it all. There's not much to say about this. It's it's brilliant. Um, it's easy to use. Um, yeah, and the fill ports on it are absolutely brilliant. You can pour so much damn liquid in this thing. It's not funny. Um, I don't think looking at it is really going to make me think any easier. Uh, so yes, that's 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 pretty much it. That's all I've got. Um, I will uh, leave you right here. Thanks for watching. Job's done.